making a Stuart model steam plant, part 74, dismantling the steam plant and starting a few jobs that are required to finish it. The first steam test seemed to be okay. The only problem was I forgot to fit the pipe to the tap at the top of the condenser, so it was impossible to drain the condenser. I think I'll put that right first. In this clip I'm removing the union nut, then the pipe, followed by the tap itself. The next part of the job is cutting the piece of pipe to length. This pipe will be soft soldered into the tap. The other end of the pipe needs to be chamfered. Over the years I've built a lot of these type of condensers and I've always found it to be a good idea to chamfer the pipe as shown here to give it a bit of clearance between itself and the bottom of the tank. I've cut the pipe to length from the base of the condenser to underneath the cap and once this pipe is soldered in position into the tap itself which is currently in the drilling machine having a 3 16 of an inch diameter hole drilled in the end of it. The hole in the tap is about the depth of the threads. So when it's in position, the bottom part of the pipe will not be touching the base. Time to solder it into the tap. I coated the end of the pipe with some Fryer Lux solder paint. This is a mixture of ground up solder and flux. I'd better mention, before some viewers get confused, this is soft soldering, not silver soldering. And to help the job along, I've applied some electrical solder too. I cleaned up the area with a paintbrush dipped in water, and now it's sat there cooling. It is possible to soft solder piping into these valves without burning off the paint. But I do not want this part to be painted, so I thought it would help along the paint removal with the blowtorch. To continue removing the piping, the next one to go is the flexible pipe between the Stuart Double Ten and the condenser, followed by the other pipe from the S50 engine. That's a copper pipe, not a flexible one. The next pipe to go is the exhaust pipe from the condenser to the chimney. I don't want anyone to be confused by this operation. If you look at the condenser, the outlet pipe is halfway down it approximately. But there is a silver soldered pipe from the inside of the union right to the top of the condenser. This was all covered in the video about building the condenser. Time to disconnect the piping from the preheater. These two unions just connect to a loop of pipe which sits inside the condenser and the exhaust steam preheats the feed water inlet. As you pump water from the water tank into the boiler it goes through the preheater coil so the water that goes into the boiler is already quite hot. With all the piping removed I simply unbolt the condenser from the baseboard. Very shortly I need to paint the condenser black but I wanted that to be the last job so I didn't scratch the paint. What I'm doing here is mopping up some of the water that ran out of the preheater. I need to thoroughly clean and scratch this condenser tank to provide a suitable key for the paint. I need to do a lot more than I'm about to show, but I'm starting off with some medium grit, I think it's 135 emery cloth. And this, as you can see, scratches the copper quite well. This, though, is only the beginning. I've got quite a long way to go before it's ready for priming. With the condenser disconnected, it's now time to disconnect the engines from the boiler. It's fairly obvious what I'm doing. I'm loosening the union nuts at each end of the pieces of pipe and then removing the pieces of pipe. The third tap does not have a connection on it. It's been quite useful for putting air into the boiler. The owner asked me to fit a third tap so he could run a third engine from the boiler. I removed the thin pipe from the water gauge blowdown valve and here I'm unscrewing the temporary bolts that are holding the water tank to the baseboard. Now there are only two more pipes left to remove, the one that goes from the hand pump's outlet to the inlet of the check valve, and saving the best till last, or should I say the most fiddly part till last, I need to remove the bracket that supports the gas pipe to the burner. Once again you can clearly see the damage to the head of the brass machine screw. That's because I had to put a lot of pressure on the screw to thread the hole and the screwdriver was a bit too small. When the plant is finished it will need to be dismantled to be shipped to the USA and I will be supplying the plant complete with brand new fixings for the parts that are mounted to the baseboard. And no, this is not a mobile over my cot, it's all the piping tied together with a piece of silicone rubber tubing. And now it's into the outer part of the workshop and all of the piping has been put into the acid bath where it will stay for about 24 hours. The acid isn't very strong. 
I use Kilrock K Kettle Descaler for this job. Back into the workshop and I've been draining the boiler using the blowdown valve on the water gauge. The water is running into a small plastic box. During the steam test I noticed something wrong with the water gauge. There was always a tiny bit of water around the top part of the bottom nut. And when I tightened the bottom nut it didn't feel good. So it's time to have a look at this because I don't think it's aligned properly and I have a sneaking feeling that the bottom of the glass is broken. The only way to find this out is to remove the glass and sure enough, just as I thought, the bottom of the glass has broken. This definitely needs some attention. Sometimes the bushes on boilers can be misaligned so I'm going to check this. In this clip you can clearly see the broken piece of glass in the bottom fitting. And when I first cut the piece of glass tube, it did not look like this. The water is still draining from the blowdown valve, and I thought this would be a good time to drain the boiler completely. I used a bigger plastic tub to catch the water and lifted the baseboard at the other end. Now the boiler is empty. Moving on to the next job, I need to remove the paint from the globe valve that's going to sit on top of the condenser. And for this, I'm using standard thinners, cellulose thinners or lacquer thinner. I have a small polythene tub and I'm putting some of the thinners into this. I don't need to fill the tub right to the top. I put enough of the solvent in the tub and then tip it just so it submerges the valve. A quick health and safety notice when using things like cellulose thinners or any powerful solvents always work in a very well ventilated space. I'm going one better than that. I'm leaving the workshop altogether. That's it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.